Hello and welcome to another video on data analysis expressions. In this video, I want to tackle the topic of trying to come up with an ending balance and doing that at the month level. So there's a challenge there and then doing it when we have blanks in our data set. So we're just going to write DAX and I'm going to walk through some scenarios here, write an expression, take a look at it in the table, talk about why it's not quite working the way we want it and then how can we adjust it. This is going to be lots of fun. I'm going to do a series of these videos like this where we just write DAX together, just learn DAX. Maybe you don't have this unique problem, but still, anytime you're learning more about the functions that are available, the filter context, the row context, that's going to be important. In this series, I'm going to dive into some pretty tough topics. I'm looking forward to it. I love DAX. been working with it for many, many years, teaching it for many, many years, and uh, I really, really love working with DAX. So let's jump right in, talk about the problem and solve it. So in this data set right here, what I have is we have the closing price for Microsoft stock. I chose this data set specifically because it helps to solve the, or it, it helps to present the problem that we want to work with, right? If you know anything about the stock market, the stock market is not open every day of the week. There are holidays, there are weekends, there are other things that occur. And so what we want is hypothetically we want to come up with the closing price at the end of the month now this closing price is incorrect this is a you know when you look at the stock price of microsoft the stock price of microsoft is what's called a semi-additive measure and semi-additive measures can be added across certain dimensions or certain tables but not all most of the time a semi-additive measure can't be added across the time dimension and this makes sense for example, if you look at my account balance in my checking account, let's say I have a whopping $100 sitting in there on January 1st. Well, on January 31st, I have $100 in my checking account. If I had $100 on January 1st and $100 on January 2nd, all the way through the end of January 31st, you can't really add that up across time because if you add that up, you'd say that I have $3,100, which I do not. I have $100 but you could add account balances across customers across products right so if mitchell had a hundred dollars and devin had a hundred dollars and manuel had a hundred dollars in their account and you said what is the account balance of all of our customers you sum that up it's three hundred dollars that's correct so it's semi-additive you can add it across some dimensions some of them you cannot generally speaking it usually falls into that time category so this number in and of itself right here is a challenge already because this is not the real number i'm just summing up the closing price so that we have a measure that we can use here. But what we want to do is we're looking at this at the month level. I want to return a measure that's going to give us the closing price for the month. And so my first attempt at this, and there's a couple different attempts, but my first attempt at this might be to come over here. I'm going to create a new measure and I'm going to use the last date function, right? We're going to use the last date function and talk about kind of maybe what the limitation with that is. So let's call this something like closing price and then end of month, right? E-O-M equals. And then I want to return the closing price for the last day of the month. So we're going to say calculate. And then for our measure, we're just going to reuse the closing price we already have. And then for the filter here, we're going to say last date date column from our date table. We'll close that up. And this is going to be our first attempt. Now, some of you are DAX experts working in DAX on a regular basis. So you kind of already know where this one's going to go. Um, this presents a couple of different issues, though. So let's go ahead and format it real quick. close enough and we'll go ahead and add a closing price end of month to our table now I'm not going to play around with this because there's a little bit of a delay here well I am going to fix it there we go and you'll notice that I'm getting the closing price for April I'm getting the closing price for May but then when we get to let's say June we're not getting a closing price the reason for that is because, once again, the stock market is not open on every day. And so what this signifies right here is it signifies that the stock market was not open on June 30th, 2012. 
And so last date, what the last date function does is it gets the very last day of June, which is June 30th, and it returns blank for closing price because there was no closing price on that date, right? So that's the first problem that this one presents. And so another way to write this calculation is using the function last non-blank. Maybe you've worked with that, right? You've worked with last non-blank, you're familiar with these. There's a lot of great use cases for that. And so what last non-blank will do is it's going to return the last value from a column within the current context where that value is not blank. Now, the key element there is gonna be within a current context. So you're gonna see the problem with this one in a minute as well. So we're gonna go back and take a look at this. Let's do here last non-blank, right? So instead of date, we're gonna do last non-blank and it's going to be, how are we gonna determine if the column's blank or not? We're gonna use closing date, of course. So let's put a comma right there. Our closing price, all right. Got enough closing parentheses, we'll hit enter. Fortunately, we don't have to format it again because we're just gonna change the one that we have. And so last non-blank is gonna get the last value in this column where the value is not blank within the current filter context. This looks awesome. So you call your boss up, you're like, hey, I've solved it, we're good to go. We have our last day of the month, this is working, you go on vacation. Then somebody has the bright idea that they're gonna go down to the month level or the day level, right? So we go down to day level. Let's go take a look at this. We're gonna grab that measure, pull it in again. And this is called closing price end of month. But when you look at the value here, the closing price is now being constrained. Look at that. It's now being constrained to the day level, right? Let's fix that arrow. It's now showing us April 23rd. It's now showing us April 24th, April 25th. So we need to fix that. This is kind of like a false positive. When you're writing calculations in DAX, you always have to think about how are my end users going to slice the data? And if you set this up and you do your validation at the month level and you never drill down to the day level, you don't realize that this is not quite going to work. And so, yes, this got us pretty close, but because the day level is not working, we're going to need to take another shot at this. So let's take a look at another function. Like I said, we're just writing DAX today. We're just having fun, taking a look at different things that we can do. This calculation right here, we're going to come back to him. We're going to visit him later. But for now, let's go ahead and comment out that code using control KC on my keyboard. Comment that out. In fact, if you're not familiar with that, control plus control plus K plus C gives you an easy way to kind of comment out all your code. And then optionally, if you do control plus K plus U, it will uncomment out your code. So very big fan of that. And then we're gonna use a new function here. I'm gonna show you a new function. This is a time intelligence function designed specifically for this scenario, what could go wrong. So we're gonna use closing balance for the month. It is literally built for this scenario. And our expression is going to be our closing price. Our date from our date table is going to be date. Let's try that again. All right, close that up. Let's take a look at what we got. So closing balance month is going to look at our date table for the current month, and it's going to get the last day of the month. Now, you see the difference immediately, even at the day level. This is a beautiful thing. We're getting the very last day of the month. In fact, we got closing price here. Let's go find the last day of the month. The last day of the month, April 30th, $32. Now you notice we had gaps, right? 28, 29. You get to May, 29, 19. And we get to the very last day of May and we have 29, 19. So that is perfect. But we get to June. June has blanks. Why? Because closing balance month does the same thing in, in, in a lot of the same ways that last date does. It gets you the very last date of the month and so if the last day of your month is blank, meaning you don't have sales or whatever it might be on the last day, which for us would have been June 30th, so there is no transaction here, then it returns a blank value. 
So we've taken a couple of different shots at this. We looked at last date. That worked great. But then when we went down to, or it worked okay, um, but it didn't handle blanks. We looked at last non-blank. That worked incredibly well at the month level. But once the current filter context changed and we were at the day level, it was limited to the day that we were currently looking at. We looked at closing balance month, which is designed for this, but it doesn't handle blank values. So we're going to write this another way. We're going to take another shot at this. So let's go ahead and jump back into our calculated expression, just writing DAX, just having fun. We know closing balance month really didn't get it done for us. We're going to go ahead and get now closing balance month is awesome if you don't have gaps in your data. But if you do, we're going to have to write essentially write out our own example here, right? So I'm going to go in here. I have calculate closing price. And now how do I want to calculate closing price? Well, instead of just using the date from our date table, we're going to use a function here. And the function that I'm going to use is called parallel period. What parallel period does, let's read the definition here. Oh, might be one R. There we go. Parallel period returns a parallel period of dates by the given set of dates and a specified interval. In other words, I'm going to pass in the date column from my date table and you can tell it to go forward or back, right? So if you did minus one month, what parallel period would do is go back to the prior month and get every single date from that month. So if we were looking at, let's say January, it would go back to December and it would get all 31 days in December. So this is pretty cool. So let's take a look at how we're going to actually work with this. The first thing we must pass in, you see it says dates. So that's going to be the date column from my date table. And then what is our intervals? Well, we're looking at closing price for the current month. So my interval is not going to be minus one. That would go back to the prior month. It's not going to be plus one. That would go to next month. So we can actually trick this and just do a zero. All right. And then our interval here is going to be month. So it's going to get all of the dates for the current month. If I were to do a count rows on this right here and I were looking at January, it would be 31 days. If I were looking at February, it would be 28 days. It gets all of the days for that month. And it doesn't matter what's cool about this and what's awesome about this is even if you're at the day level, it still gets all the days for the entire month. So that's what that's going to do. Then we're going to use last non blank to look at this expression that gets returned. And this is going to return the last day from that list of dates based on our closing price. So this is kind of the final solution here. This is the one size fits all for this solution. It's going to work now at the day level. It's going to work at the month level. So let's hit enter. You see, we have some gaps here, May and June. Let's see if it fixes the issue that we had in June, 2012. And there it is. Problem solved. It looks great. You see that we don't have a closing price on let's say June on the end of June, right? We had June 29th. We did not have a closing price on June 30th, but we're returning the last day of that month that was not blank. And we did it. We performed this magic with a combination of last non-blank and parallel period. All right. I hope you enjoyed this video. We dove into quite a few different things that we can do in DAX. I haven't talked yet about row context or filter context or context transition or nested row context or any of those more complicated topics, those deep dives, but we're going to. So if you like this video, hit like, hit subscribe. It'll notify you when I do more videos in the future and I'm going to be releasing a video once a week just talking about DAX, just writing DAX, just having fun. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.